Professor Mutuang. Huh? Oh, she's online. Okay. Who do we see? I don't know the others are. Are you one of the panelists? Is your name? You are? I called you. What did you say? Spiritually. From Maseru. Oh, from Maseru. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Professor Tali from Maseru. Yes. So we have these three. Okay. While we are waiting for the uh, panelists representing Zimbabwe, a replacement for Engineer Mzongondi, allow me to introduce myself. My first name is, is international. No one can fail to pronounce it. My first name is Adam. When I went to Tanzania, they called me Adam. <laughs> I am Dr. Adam Lutu, the principal of United College of Education, which is about 300 kilo, 400 kilometers south of this place in Bulawayo. Perhaps if I say Bulawayo, you would understand better. Well, I am the moderator in this session, and in the meantime, I am whiling up time while we wait for the Zimbabwean. I am saying the Zimbabwean because as a moderator, I am a Zimbabwean. The man who is coming up is the Zimbabwean. <laughs> Mr. Roy Mavunga, principal of Kushinga Pigelela College in Marondera, some about 80 kilometers east of Harare. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't see our topic there, but let me tell you, our topic is enhancing student employability. Enhancing student employability. And we have four panelists to assist us discuss this topic. You are all eligible to participate. But we will first of all give our panelists the opportunity. When I read this topic, I asked myself several questions because it reminded me of what uh, a question I was asked at a table in a restaurant in Owange here in Zimbabwe. We were, I, 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 I went for breakfast and there were these two ladies. I didn't know them. I just joined them. Then and they were talking. They, intro, they introduced me to their topic and then asked me a question. Then I responded with a question. And one of them said, do you have a PhD? <laughs> I said, yes. Then she said, that's why. What is why about that? Said people with PhDs, analyze things, they split hairs, even a word like fly, they would say, what is it that is flying? Is it the fly flying or a bird flying? When I look at this, and when they look at a fishing net, they ask whether 
they, these are strings that are networked or it's a bunch of holes held together by strings. But the question I asked myself is, what do we mean by enhancing student employability? It is my hope, before we look at the strategies, it is my hope that our panelists will unpack our topic for discussion. What do we mean by student employability? Before we even enhance the employability, what is the student employability? I throw that question to the panel. Beginning with Dr. Dariman. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think we are all teachers and um, the bottom line of what we have to do is to train students and in fact the interest of every trainer is also to ensure that the students that we are training are um, they get gainfully employed. So employability, student employability is just simply looking at um, ways we can actually give what are the, um, the imparted skills we can actually give the students so that they can easily be employed by industry. Simply, I think this is what uh, student employability means before we talk about enhancement. Can I go on with enhancement or maybe probably? Just wait there. Okay. Uh, the way I understand here, I want us to have a common understanding before we progress. The way I understand here is that we are looking at the quality of getting gainful employment. The skills that we have imparted so that the person gets gainful employment. If that is the understanding we have. Here are we looking at, I'm throwing another question before we move on to enhancement. Are we looking at uh, the student's quality for getting a job where the student now as an employee would be getting a salary or the student getting a job where the student is employed by self is employability looking at someone out there waiting to employ our student what employability are we talking about here self-employment in Zimbabwe, they would understand better if I say self-job. Self-employment or being employed by somebody, by an employer. Uh, I have to check the name. Professor Tal. Okay, okay thank you very much. Um, I think as it is said, the, the topic is enhancing student employability. And basically the way I, I look at um, training of students in, in three ways. One, um, the first thing is when you train students, you want them to, for them to improve themselves to be able to go to the next level. If they have a certificate, if they have diploma, you want them to be able to upgrade their, 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 their qualifications to the next level, be able to get into, into degrees and ultimately even have PhDs, whatever the case, so that they can better, the, you know, better improve themselves academically. That is part of training. The second part of training is the issue of employability. We are assuming that there is a, a market for students where they would now be absorbed uh, after having acquired the technical skills. That is the area which I, I think the, the, the topic is, is about, to say that you want the students to be able to address societal need, needs and also the industrial needs. But the other part of training is the one which the moderator has talked about, which is the issue of um, 
the students being trained to be able to create jobs. So therefore, in all these areas, my belief is that indeed we have to deal with, with all of them and we need to balance, to balance those. Uh, my, my understanding is that the issue of employability deals directly with having to address either societal needs or the, the industrial needs, whether the students are skilled to be able to do that. I hope I have answered this, but I've gone broadly also to try to understand what the technical training is all about. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Uh, we have got it. This is the di direction we are moving now, ladies and gentlemen. We are saying that employability in terms of upgrading oneself so that the person gets a, a, a higher quality education, higher qualifications, and become employable or create employment for societal improvement. Right, we move from there now, ladies and gentlemen, and we move to enhancement. I, we, I, I am now not focusing on enhancement as a word, as a term, but I'm focusing on enhancing student employability. When we talk of enhancing student employability, what are we talking about? And what strategies do we employ? Now, uh, let me pick on to somebody else. Um, what I forget, are the, the, I know the names now, but I forget the titles. Dr. Mutai. <laughs> uh, thank you, moderator. Um, may I start from the employ employability uh, term in itself? before I look at the enhancement, I look at employability in terms of, or training in terms of uh, four uh, categories. First, we have the foundation where all of us went through in terms of uh, literacy and uh, numeracy. That is the basic, that was the basic foundation. Then, then now we have um, the training in terms of vocational and technical training where we, we give the students the skills. And these skills is all about how to perform a task. Then when it comes to, as far as uh, I'm concerned, is that when it comes to employability, then there are those personal attributes where the employer would want to see or identify from the students or the, the employee. These attributes, um, I look at it in terms of honesty, integrity. Those are the personal attributes which the employer would, would want to identify from the employee. The third um, part is, portion of it is, is um, the common soft skills that the employer would want to see or get an employee who is ready to adapt and be able to learn as he works or as she works. So in, in, in order to cope up with uh, the challenges of the technology, um, changing technology, that to me is that will enhance the employability of the trainees. Having been taken through the technical programs, they have already gotten the skills, they have already gotten how to perform certain tasks. However, the employer or the industry would want to have an employee who is capable of um, working without I mean, with minimum supervision, punctuality, efficient in terms of working. And I think these are some of the uh, common um, skills one requires. Then in terms of enhancing, let me now look at enhancing. 
Um, I want to look at the very basic. When you look at employers or industries looking for employees, they normally advertise sometimes and say you should have skills in this area and they go further to say one should have an experience in a certain field or you have had, you have been exposed. That, that alone is an indication that then in our training we need to change our approach. Side that, side that the training becomes the precursor to employment so that the experience is part of lifelong learning when one is working. You, you, we are all aware that uh, the certificates, everyone is struggling to get a certificate, the academic certificate. And even our trainees seriously are looking for certificates fast. They don't even think of the employment. They are struggling to get certificates. Then after that, they go looking for, for employment. But if the approach was, as they train, they focus on the areas they are going uh, to work in. Doc, in, in that doc, sense. Doc, in a nutshell, by nut, I don't mean coconut, but ground <laughs> nutshell. <laughs> yeah, basically, I think that's what I, I, I would say. Um, so, that, so, that, so that basically they can translate from the training, getting the skills, at the same time focusing on where they are going to work. So that this experience becomes, um, education becomes precursor to employment. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Mr. Mavunga. Do you want to add or object to that? Oh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, um, I wanted to use a Zimbabwean example uh, where we are saying that, uh, first of all, after observing that there was a, 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 a misnomer in terms of um, the employability of graduates from our institutions. We started by introducing what we call on-the-job education and training. Now, what it meant was that when we, when we started, it was only three months. After a review, it went to six months. After that, now we've got one year. What, what happens is that um, during the second year, for those who be in the, in the polytechnic, during, during their second year, the first year they spent at college, the next year they all go out on what we call industrial attachments, which we term <coughs> on the job education and training, and in short, OJET. The, the, the students will be attached to qualified and experienced personnel within the areas where they will be operating. It does not matter whether it is in commerce, or it is in science, or it is in the technical skills field. They all go out during that particular t uh, time. In the third year, they come back to college. Reason is that we would like them to give us the experiences that they went through. And then, with the lecturers at, at the institution, they will now be able to polish up, fill up the gaps of their experiences and marry them with the teaching that will be taking place at the institution. So that's how we started. I think our minister talked about uh, the Manpower Development Act, which gave rise to the National Qualifications Framework and uh, later on skills audit. Now, the other thing that uh, maybe the House needs to know is that um, our ministry has embarked on a, on a vigorous um, 
uh, exercise in terms of coming up with uh, innovation hubs as well as industrial hubs. In the universities, we have got innovation hubs for each and every one of our universities. And in our polytechnic, some of them have got uh, these industrial hubs. Well equipped industrial hubs where we are supposed to get into production. Besides attaching our students to industry, we also would like to attach those very students in our industrial hubs so that they are able to produce uh, goods and services. Now, having done that, I also wanted to bring to the attention of the House that in order for us to enhance student employability, we have adopted an approach which we call live training. Through the funds that we received from the Zimbabwe Manpower Development Fund for training materials or training consumables, we buy, we buy materials that can be used and converted into goods and or services. So these actually uh, enhance the kind of training that we are trying to impart to our students so that when they leave for the place of work, they are quite appropriate. The other one maybe um, that I would also want to look at is that our principals in the polytechnics, uh, those who are actually undertaking um, TVET, uh, taking uh, vocational education and training, decided to say, we have got our students who start at national certificate level. They progress to national diploma level. From national diploma level, they progress to higher national diploma level. But after that, in the past, there was actually a misnomer where our universities were not accepting our students. They were saying they ought to start from- uh, Mr. Mavunga, it's not a lecture, it's not a lecture. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let me just finish up. <laughs> Thank you. So we managed to realign and come up with our own Bachelor of Technology degree that actually is a progression from the National Certificate, National Diploma, and Higher National Diploma. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Mavunga. I'm itching to have the audience participating, but before I give the audience that chance, I know that uh, um, engineer Dr. Dariman is on the edge of her seat on, on the issue of strategizing. Engineer Dr. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, on enhancing, um, in fact, I have four strategies um, we can actually go. Um, I would like to say that um, as a technical student, in fact, I started my education as a, a polytechnic student and now teaching in the Polytechnic Now Technical University. And um, in fact, um, I had to, st I studied in the United Kingdom and that's something I found very interesting as a student when I was there. I, the, the, in fact, our class, we, we had, um, um, they had a job fair. So in the programs we were having, every model that we had, um, they actually brought in industry. And so the, the departments were working closely with the industry. So every model, by the end of the model, we actually had this job fair. So the industry is actually exactly knew what we were doing. And I think this is something that we can actually look at, really having that close uh, industrial quality, uh, industrial linkage with, with, with our students. Currently, what we mostly do is that we ask them to go. It's, it's very common in almost all our curriculum that they will have to do industrial attachment. They go, they come back. We even sometimes we score. But sometimes if the monitoring of that is not done properly, then there's a problem. So if this one is done properly, I think we can enhance um, student employability. And also, um, the World Bank and then the IFC in Ghana is trying to uh, form what we call pro, uh, program advisory pack, in fact, uh, committees in our department. So every program should have 
a PAC or a program advisory committee. And these committee members involves alumni, industry, and even community members. And there they tell you exactly what the program they need what they need for the program. And once that is very clear, in fact, once they, 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 they complete school, immediately they get jobs. And I would also want to talk, yesterday we had a lecture from uh, Professor Kiel, and he, she was actually talking about using our project works, um, translating these project works into um, uh, 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 business concepts. I think if you're able to do this very well also, it should be able to enhance um, student employability. And there's one critical point I would want to talk on, touch on before probably a hand of the mic. Uh, we teach students, and uh, this is a very big question I would want us all to ask ourselves, whether the educator, when we were teaching, we teach the technical, uh, logical, technical education. Do we also teach life skills? What I mean by life skills is that sometimes you go for an interview, um, I'm talking about self-awareness, um, interpersonal skills, and also thinking skills. Sometimes the students, um, I have been privileged to sit on various panels, a student, very intelligent student, practical, with all the practical sense of knowledge comes in, and the person is not able to actually express him or herself very well at an interview panel. And the moment that happens, Anybody taking the decision was, oh, no, we can hire this person. Meanwhile, probably it's because of these things, skills are not being taught. So probably back in our curriculum, I know it's very difficult if we have to put this in, but if in our teaching methodologies, if we're able to teach these uh, life skills as we teach along, I think it will go a long way to enhance employability. Uh, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Well. I tell myself that we have uh, take homes from what the panelists have said. And I think amongst you, the audience, there are some people who are holding on to something which can be a take home for someone among the audience and someone in the panel. Enhancing student employability. What are we doing and how can we improve it? I'm now asking the audience. Yes, sir. Is it name or say? I don't know. I'm seeing the hand. Yes. Employability. It's one thing to talk about getting the job as part of employability. It's another to be able to retain the job as part of employability. And yet it's another to be able to move upward within the required job. I, I, this is how I think we could poss possibly look at it. Um, because employability does not end with getting the job. Um, you get the job, can you maintain the job? Are you able to move upward within the job? Okay, okay. Moving upward or maintaining it, I think, brings us to the soft sk skills, which one of the panelists mentioned here. And it reminded me of someone who went for an interview and was asked about his strongest uh, attribute. He said, my strongest attribute is being honest. <laughs> and the boss said, that's very good. In my view, it's a very good attribute. And the interviewee said, I don't give a damn what your view is. Being very honest, isn't it? <laughs> there was a hand. The, 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 the gentleman who has just spoken is not the, the gentleman I intended to speak. There is someone behind that near you there. Yes, that's the person I, I yeah. had seen. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator, Professor. 
and I would like to appreciate the ideas uh, came from the panelists. I'm called Haila Michael. I'm coming from the World Bank funded project called Istrip. So I wanted to um, compliment what the panelists have said, and of course also my brother here. Um, I want us to imagine job market uh, when we talk about the employability and enhancing uh, employability. So uh, it's about reconciling the demand side and the supply side. So um, if we take the employees are coming from the supply side, probably from polytechnics, TV providers, or higher education, and also the demand side, self, uh, I mean the demand side, self-employers or employers, industries, private sector could be the, uh, the demand side. So <clears throat> what are the, the knowledge, the skill, and the right work attitude uh, required to be able to perform and make the industries competitive is usually the, the need coming from the uh, demand side. And the supply side should equip the graduates with all required uh, tools, which we have already mentioned. So <clears throat> from that uh, perspective, when we think of uh, enhancing, it's about improving the condition, the condition of being employed whether it is self uh, or wage employment. So um, what are then the tools or the key uh, things to consider to improve the employability? So uh, as project, we, uh, on this wallet funded project, we consider one of the thing is <coughs> improving the labor market uh, study. We have to assess uh, the, the labor market so that we uh, customize our trainings according to labor market information. So that could be one of the most important tool to improve the employability of the graduates. Secondly is like uh, what panelists have said, is improving the cooperation between the, the providers, TIBIT or skill providers and uh, those who employ, that is the partnership between the employers and uh, uh, training providers. And uh, um, thirdly is uh, uh, also enhancing the uh, competency-based training. We have to move from the input-based training towards the competency-based training. Uh, so that's what I, I would like to say. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Competency-based training, focusing on skills. What competencies does our student have when he graduates or when she graduates? That is what I, I, I got from him, family. Let's share. How do we enhance student employability? There is a hand right at the back, right at the back, Um, thank you so much, moderator. Um, Tafaza Shirinda from the International Labor Organization. Um, please allow me to also add to what the previous speaker highlighted on. Particularly what we have seen is the gap between what is in the labor market and then also the supply side. So to ensure that the employability for the young people who are coming from our Tibet institution is enhanced, we have also seen that it is critical for us to improve what you call skills anticipation systems. And the skills anticipation systems are part of the labor market information systems. Where then members um, have to have a labor market information systems that is there to give information to young people pertaining to what are the skills that are required in the labor market. And now 
when we talk of upskilling, reskilling, we have seen these are some of the measures that will be employed, but mainly to address the skills gaps that would be existing then between what is demanded in the labor market and what is coming from the supply side from our Tibet institutions. So it is always important for us to have a comprehensive system that integrate our supply side that is of skills, the Tibet institutions, and the demand side where the information pertain to what are the current occupations that are required in specific sectors. We are the people then that we need to be trained. So it's also important for us to constantly ensure that as a labor market information systems, skills anticipation mechanism are also included into this system. Thank you, I submit. Thank you, thank you. I picked on uh, uh, skills market information systems uh, the labor market information systems, and I say to myself, from what you are saying, then that calls for a budget, a budget to keep our equi equipment at the same level as the equipment that is on the labor market. Otherwise, we could be training our trainees using obsolete equipment. And then they go to the labor market, they can't op operate what they find there. Okay. Uh, anyone from here before I go back? Uh, Mr. Mafunga. Uh, I just wanted to add um, uh, the aspect of involvement of industry in, uh, in the training of. Um, uh, the students while still at college. And I want to take it from two angles. The first one is that uh, of assessment, where we involve industry in terms of um, uh, assessing our students. If I were to take a, the Zimbabwean example, we have got what is called external assessment, which is a periodic assessment um, that takes place because our examination, the final examination comprises of 60% of continuous assessment and 40% of the final examination. So we invite industry to come in to assess uh, the students after verifying with the syllabuses or schemes of work of the lecturers. And then the second one is in terms of curriculum review. We involve industry in terms of curriculum review for purposes of making sure that our, our students remain relevant, our curriculum remains relevant to the needs of industry. So industry is involved, first of all, in terms of curriculum review. This is where they actually say this this is no longer applicable in our industry, be it in commerce, be it in manufacturing, and so on and so forth. So they are uh, involved in terms of saying, let's trim down the, um, the uh, curriculum, let's add these, and so on. These are skills that are now obsolete. I'll give you an example. These days, for, for shorthand, shorthand is no longer that very critical because people are now using dictaphones and what have you. So that's how we can also enhance the enhancement that we can have in terms of making sure that the candidates we produce in our institutions remain uh, relevant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mavunga. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, we were supposed to have this panel discussion for one and a half hours. And we started very late. And we are into injury time now. I will allow for uh, two participants from the audience. And then after the two participants from the audience, I will give you one minute each to the panelists to wrap up before my time is up. From the audience, I will pick um, the gentleman in a native Nigerian dress, the, the blue one. <laughs> Mike? Okay. 
Okay, Mr. Moderator, thank you for the opportunity, distinguished panelists, my colleagues. I am Professor Amin Alaj Ibrahim uh, from Umar Ali Shinkai Polytechnic, Sokoto, Nigeria. Uh, I think the subject of employability, even from the proceedings we had yesterday and day before, uh, has been one of the topics of discussion. And in fact, it has been a key to the Tibet sector in particular. Uh, I think, that, like um, was rightly observed, there are so many contributing factors. There are so many steps, so many contributing factors to our enhancement of employability on our students. The first and most important of it is we ourselves, teachers. For example, as you are teaching your students to put up as a business plan, are you business oriented yourself as a teacher? Or are you only saying it? Because what we know in Africa, and I think it's a general concept, is that the best leadership is leadership by examples. If we do not look business oriented, we don't expect the people we train to be business oriented. So that's what makes most of the researches and output of most of our students on the archives. So the second aspect of it is the curricular. Of course, as was rightly observed, Tibet sector is a skilled training, skill-based training. In Nigeria, we know we are required to at least have a content of 70, at least 70 percent practical oriented in the training of Tibet, in the Tibet sector. Uh, but we have uh, a lot of problems to that, and most of it is the equipment. But I, I said it yesterday that we are, because of the intervention we are getting, we are trying to improvise even on the equipments we used to teach the skills. Uh, so publication is also one, one of the factors that we must make sure that most of the projects, or all of the stud uh, student projects, are skill oriented, are always oriented towards output that are usable. Uh, secondly, uh, thirdly, we have to involve the private sector. You don't expect that governments alone will absorb all our students. Government alone will be the only uh, sector that will patronize the output of our students. Private sector is a key because they are the ones in the business, they are the ones who have the funds, they are the ones who have the structure. So in this case, uh, I think it is in line that whatever curricula we are developing, we have to have an input from the industry, from the business perspective, so that these students, as they graduate, they have, a wire, they have a wire to go. I know in Nigeria, we have what we call industrial training fund, where we, we actually send our students to spend six months at least uh, each year for tra uh, 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 industry training. But most of the time when they come back, because we don't have much of the involvement of the industry, we don't get feedback. So I think part of what we are supposed to wrap up with is to try to mobilize institutions across governments, across uh, various uh, level of curricula and so on and so forth, to make sure that we evolve a policy that involves the private sector so that uh, our students will get uh, fully employed after graduation. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. The lady here. Brief, ma'am, brief, 30 seconds. Oh, One, okay. Thank you. Two. Dr. Odicho Naomi is my name from Thika Technical <laughs> Training Institute. A question was asked by one of the panelists whether we are teaching life skills, and I want to say, yes, we teach life skills, and in Kenya, under the competence-based training, it has intentionally been named uh, employability skills. We are teaching those skills, but the question I'm asking myself, do we sometimes undo our teaching by our behavior? Are we modeling that teaching? If you are teaching, for example, time management, and the students say you come into class 30 minutes late, are you undoing what you taught? Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, now I turn to the panelists like I promised. I keep my promises. Although I will break one. I had said one minute each. Now I'm saying 30 seconds each. Please take cognizance of what the audience said. All right. In, um, now let me start from uh, about the center. Say, Doc. You. Uh, thank you. I, I would want to um, echo what has been said, but I want to also uh, highlight how we do uh, the engagement with the the industries that uh, every educator, every institution has industries, relevant industries um, collaborating okay. so that we intensively uh, let the students understand what the industry requires as they prepare uh, for employment. So that as they learn, they also will get to learn that the employer requires and the employer also will be able to set the standards. 28 thank seconds. You. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, engineer Doc. Okay, so um, we are running out of time. Yes. So the take home question I'll ask whom are we training our students for? Um, of course, we've talked today for the industry. So, industrial linkage we talked about. And so, for, in fact, we also know that the jobs are, the, these industries are actually not there. They are not there, depending on where you are. So, we are also talking about the experiential entrepreneurship. Let's think about it. Um, I've seen a project by CEDA, and they, in fact, with no skills at all, they will teach you just one hour, two hours, just go and make money in four hours. You know, it's a challenge. They ask you, go out there, make money in four hours, and they go out and come back with money. And so we can actually apply this experiential entrepreneurship in almost all our programs, 26, and we can really enhance employability. Thank you. <laughs> Prof. Oh, thank you very much. I think you're really pressed on time. I think the issue which has been raised here, you know, um, indeed, um, are well echoed. But uh, the first thing is basically we need to assess the needs of our industry. We need to review our curriculum and also design them in line with the industry needs. We need uh, the experiential training. I think has been talked about. It is important. But over and above that, you also have to have open days for our students so that the industry can be invited to see what our students are, cap are capable of doing. We need to establish what you call the industrial boards because that is what you are saying. You need to have feedback from our stakeholders. So therefore, the industrial boards are the ones which also can help and guide us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I think this was going to be a very interesting uh, discussion if we had taken our full one and a half hours. However, I think we have take-homes take -homes from, uh, from those who have uh, told us something about what they are doing uh, and those who have shared their ideas with us. Asante sana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lutuli, for uh, moderating that panel discussion. As we move on with our program, we're now getting into the WITED Forum. And for this, um, I am inviting to the podium uh, chairperson of the session, uh, Professor Ellie Joy Micheni. May you please show her some appreciation as she walks to the podium.